Hey there, my name is Sal, your AI-generated virtual host. Welcome to this year's Utility Damage Prevention Meeting. Thanks for taking a break from the usual grind to attend. Today, we're diving into the nitty-gritty of digging safely around utility lines and sharing some solid tips to keep you and your crew out of trouble. By the time we're done here, you'll be leaving with an understanding of how to safely dig near utility lines. So, let's get started. Every day, we're surrounded by critical infrastructure. Some we see, like power lines and telecom towers. But how about what we can't see? Beneath our feet lies a vast network. Cables, pipelines, water mains, and more. Essential lifelines that make our modern lives tick. From cities to remote regions, these networks stretch across our state. But every year, Thousands of these buried lines are accidentally damaged, leading to outages, injuries, environmental harm, and expensive repair bills. The solution? A collective team effort by excavators, operators, locators, and call centers. In places like Wisconsin, the complexity of these facilities grows annually. All crucial for transmitting energy, communication, water, and more. Remember, our infrastructure includes visible and hidden elements, all vital for our modern world. Let's learn how to protect and appreciate these assets. Damage Prevention and Excavation Damage prevention is our game plan to protect facilities, keep everyone safe, and look out for the environment. Excavation? That's any time we're shifting earth around. Whether using heavy machinery, dynamite, or just tools, in Wisconsin, this includes everything from simple digging to large, complex excavation projects. Remember, underground utilities can surprise you with their depth, sometimes being just below the surface. Damaging these utilities is not only pricey, but dangerous. We'll get into the consequences later. So, every time we dig or work around these utilities, let's be extra cautious. Facility Damage what do we mean by facility damage? It's any harm to a facility that leads to costs, service disruptions, or repairs. It's not just big breaks, but even scratches or dents. Remember, any ground disturbance, no matter how shallow, poses a risk. Let's keep facilities safe. Damage incidents. Beneath our feet, a vast network stretches over 20 million miles or roughly a football field's length, for each of us in the U.S. Shockingly, every nine minutes, an underground facility is damaged. Most utility damage happens in summer, especially August, with weekends seeing more hand-tool-related accidents due to DIY-type projects. In 2022 alone, Wisconsin had almost 2,364 reported damages. Where's this data from? It's collected and reported by the Common Ground Alliance. A closer look? 83.4% of Wisconsin's damages came from contractors, which includes both excavators and locators. Natural gas facilities took the biggest hit at 51.46%, followed by telecommunications at 25.4% and electric at 20.56%. Damages are not just costly, they can disrupt the essential services we all rely on in our daily lives. What's behind all the damages? A whopping 75% are caused by excavation and locating issues, while 20% of damage comes from failing to notify Digger's Hotline in advance of the excavating. By contacting Digger's Hotline at least three days before digging, following all excavation rules and best practices, and respecting the locate marks, could reduce facility damage significantly. We'll dig into this more shortly. Consequences When underground facilities are damaged, the aftermath can be devastating. Loss of life, injury, environmental harm, evacuations, disasters, service interruptions, property and equipment damage, downtime, financial loss. These are just the immediate effects. The ripple effects continue. Rehab for workers and the environment. Equipment repairs, emergency service costs, lawsuits and medical bills, even soaring insurance premiums. And your reputation? It's on the line too. There's more. 
OSHA investigations and potential legal consequences. It's a cascade of complications. Pre-excavation planning and hazard assessment. Did you know there's a mind-blowing 100 billion feet of utilities hidden beneath us? And every nine minutes, something goes wrong. Pre-excavation planning isn't just smart, it's essential. Kick off your project the right way to find the excavation area and do a visual check for indications of underground facilities and hazards before contacting Diggers Hotline. If you're digging in Wisconsin, know your surroundings, your mission. Dig safely and avoid disturbing essential underground facilities. Due diligence. Size doesn't matter. Every dig needs careful planning. That's what we call due diligence. It's about being wise, alert, and proactive. No matter what your role is on the excavation project, safety is your ultimate responsibility. Due diligence is not just a term, it's a critical practice in excavation. It's about taking every reasonable step to ensure that your excavation project doesn't interfere with underground facilities. The first step, know what lies beneath. Before you dig, it's vital to identify any underground utilities in and near your excavation area. This step can prevent costly and dangerous mistakes. Next, plan your excavation to avoid these facilities. Every move should be calculated to prevent any disruption to existing underground infrastructure. So, what does due diligence really mean? It's the level of care and caution expected of a reasonable person. In the context of excavation, it's about foreseeing potential hazards and taking steps to avoid them. In occupational health and safety, due diligence means both employers and employees must work together. They should identify workplace hazards and take corrective actions to prevent accidents and injuries. But what exactly is a hazard? It's anything that can cause harm, often related to conditions or activities that if uncontrolled can lead to injury or illness. Implementing due diligence involves thorough planning, regular safety checks, and continuous awareness of the excavation environment. Remember, the goal is not just to complete the job, but to do it safely and responsibly. Whether you're with a big corporation, a small contractor, or working independently, practicing due diligence is crucial. Stay informed, stay cautious, and let's keep our excavation sites safe. Job Safety Analysis Where do we start? Enter the JSA, Job Safety Analysis. It's all about foreseeing dangers and making smart moves before they become real problems. Let's dive into how this powerful tool can enhance safety and efficiency in your workplace. A job safety analysis is not just a document, it's a process. It's designed to help employees and managers identify and mitigate workplace hazards, ensuring a safer and more productive environment. At its core, JSA involves three crucial steps, outlining the specific job tasks, identifying potential safety and health hazards for each step, and recommending actions to eliminate or reduce these risks. The first step in conducting a JSA is prioritizing jobs for analysis. Focus on tasks with high accident rates, near misses, or those involving digging near underground facilities. Next, break down each job into detailed steps. Observe these tasks in action and engage employees for their insights, especially where risks like pipelines, power lines, machinery accidents, slips, falls, or exposure to harmful substances are present. List all potential hazards associated with each job step. Don't overlook areas like falls from heights, excavation in the tolerance zone, or exposure to extreme temperatures and harmful chemicals. The final step is developing solutions. Can a hazard be eliminated? What about safer equipment or better training? Involving employees in this discussion is key to finding effective and practical solutions. Properly conducted, JSA brings numerous benefits, enhanced safety knowledge, fewer accidents, improved job methods, and increased overall productivity. Remember, every JSA is unique. Tailor it to fit the specific needs of your workplace. And that's how you make your workplace safer and more efficient with job safety analysis. Who's involved? Behind every excavation, there's a team. Let's meet them. Project owners, they hold the keys to the worksite. Their role? 
ensure safety, manage finances, and set expectations for the excavation. Facility owners, operators, the guardians of the underground lines. Their focus? Ensuring everyone works safely around their facilities. One call center. Think of them as the information hub. Here in Wisconsin, that's Digger's Hotline. They connect excavators with facility owners who mark their underground utilities. Remember, Digger's Hotline does not do the actual locating in the field. That's the responsibility of the utilities. Excavators, a vast team. From road construction crews to landscapers, directional drilling crews to well drillers. In Wisconsin, if you're digging, you're an excavator. And lastly, the locators. They work for the facility owners and operators and mark the land to show where those hidden utilities lie. Excavation is a team effort in Wisconsin. Together, this team ensures every dig is done safely and efficiently. Documentation on site. Every excavation site is a hive of activity, but there's one thing you shouldn't overlook. Essential documentation. First up, the valid locate ticket. We'll talk more about what makes a ticket valid later, but for now, think of it as the first step to help determine what's below. Every hazard should be identified and documented in your job safety analysis. And in the face of the unexpected, your safety checklist plan is your trusted guide. We'll learn more about this essential tool next. From the initial pre-job meetings to backfill of the excavation, keeping records of every step of the process ensures everyone's on the same page. Organized and ready, your worksite documentation is as vital as any tool in your arsenal. Stay informed, stay safe. Damage Prevention Checklist Despite best efforts, emergencies can strike anytime. For every excavation site, preparation is vital. Remember, excavation isn't just digging. It's a high-risk activity. Every worker on site should be familiar with and understand the Damage Prevention Checklist. Every site is unique with its own challenges. So it's a best practice to have a site-specific damage prevention checklist for every project. Key checklist elements include identifying potential hazards using the JSA, double-checking that the locate request area and digging area matches, the location of the emergency meeting area and the nearest hospital, as well as assigning key emergency tasks like calling 911 and securing the site. Emergencies in excavation can be dire and immediate. It's essential everyone on site knows how to react. In an emergency, call 911 immediately. If the utility line is hit, stop work and call the owner directly. Ensure workers are safe and never attempt a rescue with heavy machinery. Each of these tasks should be assigned beforehand so that no time is wasted deciding who will execute which activity. Safety is in the details and preparation. Your damage prevention checklist is your roadmap. Be ready, be safe. If you would like a copy of the damage prevention checklist, please click to diggershotline.com slash contractors. White lining. Success in excavation starts way before the first shovel hits the ground. Rushing in without proper planning and site investigation? That's an invitation to risk. An important step for any successful excavation is to clearly define the worksite. The worksite is the planned excavation area and its surroundings. Why should an excavator take the extra time to do this? And why is it important? By visiting the worksite first, you will be able to effectively describe the scope of your job in relation to the site. You'll be able to narrow down your marking instructions to just the area the job will require. Defaulting to mark entire lot should never be used as a go-to marking instruction. Investigate for signs of utilities, such as cables, meters, service drops, pedestals. Another advantage to visiting your work sites before work begins is the opportunity to white line the excavation area. What is white lining? It's an effective way for an excavator to communicate directly with the locators that will mark the job site. Using white paint, flags, or stakes, you should mark your excavation boundaries. It eliminates any confusion about the marking instructions that may be on the locate request. Continuous lines, dots, or dashes? Your choice. 
A good suggestion is to keep dashes between 6 to 12 inches long and space 4 to 50 feet apart. A good rule of thumb for excavation sites of 50 feet radius or less is to use a single stake in the center. But don't forget to label it with your company's name and the site radius. Make sure you indicate that you have white-lined your worksite when you file your locate request with Digger's Hotline. White lining should be in place before you file your request. Site investigation. Looking for visual clues. In Wisconsin, before you even think of digging, there's a law that says you must contact Digger's Hotline three working days in advance of digging. But smart excavation begins even before that. Know your worksite, inside and out, with a site visit before you file your locate request. Topography, vegetation, geology, utility lines. Every detail matters. A visual inspection isn't just a recommendation, it's a best practice. Look for the telltale signs or clues of underground utilities to help you understand what you may encounter during the dig. Things like posts, flags, stakes, pipeline markers, and any other above ground indicators of buried facilities. These are just a few of the things to look for when planning your dig. Don't miss the overhead power lines. When you are near these hazards, it's important to know about OSHA's guidelines and be sure to adhere to safe working clearances. And what about buildings, roads, railways, or previous signs of construction? They're all important as they need to be included in planning your excavation safely. Tree cut lines, trenches, pits, standing water, even changes in land compaction can give you hints about newly buried lines. Before you dig, know your ground. It's the first step to safe excavation. Types of underground facilities. Safe excavation starts with understanding what types of facilities could be present on the worksite. Pipes, wires, cables, and more. Their purpose varies from utilities to data communication. Underground lines owned by utilities, governments, schools and universities, businesses. The list goes on. Private transmission facilities. When excavating, every line matters. But remember, not all are marked by the operator. Private transmission facilities, like propane or electric lines on personal property, will not be marked by the public utilities. It's on the excavator to recognize and reach out to private facility owners directly. The excavator will need to find a private locator to mark the lines using the list of private Wisconsin locators found on the Diggers Hotline website. Dig with knowledge. Every line counts. Legal requirements for notification. Your excavation area is white lined and the worksite is checked. What's next? Notify Diggers Hotline before digging. This isn't just a suggestion, it's the law. Even when you aren't digging deep. Even when you think you know where the lines are. This notification alerts utility owners, the members of Digger's Hotline, about your planned excavation so they can mark their facilities. Remember, notifying Digger's Hotline is not a green light to dig immediately. It's a heads up to operators that you will be digging near their facilities. Legally, you must notify at least three working days in advance to give utilities time to mark their lines. Every excavator on site needs to have their own locate ticket from Digger's Hotline. Don't rely on someone else that you're working for, like the general contractor or homeowner to file the locate request for you. You know the type of work you will be doing and are the best person to communicate that to Digger's Hotline. Not only that, but the law also requires it. Having your own locate request is your first line of defense if there are damage and claim issues down the road. Always call Digger's Hotline first. Stay safe, stay compliant. Contacting Digger's Hotline. Meet Digger's Hotline. 24 7. They're here to receive your excavation notifications and promptly relay them to the affected facility operators. Provide your email address when submitting your locate request, and Digger's Hotline will send you the request details, including affected operators and more. And remember those private lines like propane? They're not included in the locate request, but the Diggers Hotline website has a list of locators who can help get those lines located for you. How can you reach Diggers Hotline? Easy. Call 811 or 800-242-8511 anytime. 
or go online and use Pro Portal and Portal Lite to submit your request. Diggers Hotline, always here, always ready. Visit diggershotline.com for more. Locate requests. Planning to excavate? Start with a locate request to Diggers Hotline at least three working days before you dig. Diggers Hotline offers a variety of locate requests for different circumstances, including planning, appointment, and emergency options. Ticket types have different uses and utility response times. Get detailed information on all locate request types from Diggers Hotline. Duty of Facility Operator What are the duties of a transmission facility operator? Upon receiving a locate request, Diggers Hotline members or their vendors mark their facilities using paint and flags that match utility industry color codes. Positive Response Let's discuss positive response. It indicates the status of the locating process at the dig site. In Wisconsin, it's voluntary, meaning that some companies might not participate. If they do not, they'll be tagged not participating. However, this not participating tag doesn't mean utilities can ignore locate requests. They must adhere to start dates and mark their facilities. No response. If no response is received from a facility operator, you can file a no-show relocate. Diggers Hotline will send a request to the non-responding utility or utilities. They should reply within an hour. Locating and marking. Protecting underground facilities is everyone's responsibility. Facility operators mark the approximate location of underground facilities at the worksite. But remember, it's an approximation. Locating isn't an exact science. Know your colors. Red for electric power. Yellow for gas and petroleum. Orange for communications. Blue for water lines. Green for sewers. Pink for temporary surveys. White for proposed excavation. Generally, marks are 12 to 18 inches long and 1 inch wide, placed every 4 to 50 feet. They must clearly indicate the facility's location and direction. Markings vary based on single or multiple facilities, conduits, facility corridors, changes in direction, lateral connections, offsets due to terrain. For example, an H mark can show a single facility. Multiple lines may indicate the center of multiple facilities. Corridors mark intertwined facilities. Changes in direction and connections are indicated with arrows. Understanding the color codes in different marking types is crucial to executing your dig safely and protecting those underground facilities from damage. Respect the locate marks, dig with caution, and ensure everyone's safety on the job. Ticket Lifespan Understanding the lifespan of your locate ticket is crucial for a safe excavation. Ticket is valid as long as marks are visible and there have been no stoppages of work of 10 days or more. If you didn't start work within 10 days of the start date and time, or have stoppages of work of 10 days or more, your ticket is invalid. You'll need to call Diggers Hotline for a new ticket with a 3-day wait. If you've been working at the job site with no stoppages of work of 10 days or more and your marks need refreshing, Diggers Hotline offers crew on site and 24-hour relocates for valid tickets. And remember, if utilities hadn't responded, file a no-show relocate. Stay safe and ensure your marks are always visible and up to date. Site Meeting On significant excavation projects, especially near high priority transmission facilities, a site meeting is often essential. This can be initiated by the excavator with an appointment ticket or at the request of the utility owner, ensuring everyone's on the same page. Key elements of the site meeting include Identifying contact persons, setting communication methods, coordinating work activities, laying out the work schedule, defining the buffer zone, always ensuring a minimum of 18-inch clearance, clarifying excavation methods within the buffer, documenting safety protocols near priority facilities. It's best practice to document and keep copies of all decisions made. Remember, while Wisconsin law dictates an 18-inch clearance, 
some operators might need even up to 10 feet clearance. Stay informed and always prioritize safety. When you dig, knowledge and communication are your best tools. Dig safe. Execution. Before you dig, the first step, notify diggers hotline at least three days in advance. Remember, every excavation has its own set of challenges. Whether it's pipelines, power lines, or even private propane lines, it's a good idea for every person involved to identify and understand these transmission facilities. After contacting diggers hotline and evaluating your site, be aware of the specific restrictions that come with different transmission facilities. Safety first. Always hold a pre-excavation meeting, discussing the excavation activities to prevent accidents or damages. Every dig demands due diligence. Let's keep our site safe and our job running smoothly. Pre-excavation safety meeting. Before the dig, it's time for the pre-excavation safety meeting. Just 10 to 15 minutes daily can make a world of difference in preventing accidents and ensuring safety. These meetings are crucial to understand every aspect of the project, especially when dealing with transmission facilities. Remember, if facility marks aren't visible, it's time to notify Dicker's hotline. Always keep an eye out for overhead power lines and other potential hazards. Review all worksite restrictions, protocols, and regulations. Discuss everything from working around power lines to backfill procedures. Documenting these meetings is key. Ensuring safety today provides peace of mind for tomorrow. Let's dig safely and smartly. Critical worksite restrictions. Safety first, understanding critical worksite restrictions. Working near overhead power lines. Overhead power lines always assume they are live. Maintain a 10 to 20 foot distance depending on the equipment. Need to get closer? Check OSHA and NFPA 70 E standards first. Always remember, look up and live. Working your pipelines. Pipelines present their own set of guidelines. Industry standards suggest a two foot safety buffer for markings. A pipeline safety representative will contact you to review proper working procedures near their facilities in their right-of-way. Safety is paramount. Adhering to these guidelines ensures the safe and productive excavation. Dig smartly, dig safely. General Worksite Restrictions Safety first. Mastering general excavation guidelines. Respect locate marks. Always respect the locate marks. That means dig carefully around them and adhere to the tolerance zone. We'll talk more about the tolerance zone in just a bit. But respecting the marks also means protect them as you work. If they're damaged or obscured, contact Digger's hotline. Timing is key. Knowing when you can legally begin digging is important and never begin work before your locate request start date and time listed on your ticket. If work doesn't start or is paused for more than 10 days, Notify Digger's hotline for a relocate. Know before you dig. Awareness is crucial. Always know where underground facilities lie. Dress for safety. Stand out. Ensure workers wear high visibility attire near equipment and traffic. Trench safety. Distance matters. Keep heavy machinery and loads like soil at least two feet from trench edges. Cover and protect. All test holes or potholes should be safely covered or guarded to avoid mishaps. Visibility matters. Ensure all safety signs, facility markings, and warnings are clear and visible. By following these guidelines, you paved the way for a safer excavation journey. Dig with confidence and caution. Tolerance zone and hand exposure in excavation. Let's dig into the importance of the tolerance zone and hand exposure in excavation. The Tolerance Zone Think of the Tolerance Zone as a protective buffer. It's the space on either side of a locate mark where specific rules apply. In Wisconsin, you must keep 18 inches between marked areas and excavation tools. But it's important to remember that this distance can vary by state. If you're within 18 inches, proceed with caution using only hand tools. Hand Exposure The Safe Way to Dig 
Hand exposure means to safely uncover a facility using non-conductive tools. Avoid sharp objects. Use round-edged spades instead. When digging to expose a utility, always dig alongside the facility, not on top. Don't scrape along the side of the utility to expose it, especially if it's a gas line. Make sure you expose the entire circumference and always dig with extreme caution to prevent accidental damage. Vacuum Excavation Hydrovac uses pressurized water and suction to safely uncover underground facilities. It's efficient and generally safe. Yet always remember, improper use can still lead to utility damage. Safety in excavation is all about knowledge and precision. Respect the tolerance zone and dig wisely. Using mechanized equipment. It's essential to know that only after the utility has been fully exposed with the use of the hand tools or vacuum excavation will the tolerance zone reduce from 18 inches to 12 inches. That means no mechanized equipment is allowed within 12 inches of either side of the exposed utility as you are excavating. Using a spotter is important to help with adhering to the required 12-inch buffer zone when you are using mechanized equipment close to exposed utility lines. Mismarked facilities. If you are digging in unearthed facilities that you didn't expect, what should you do? Immediate actions. Stop your work. Immediately contact the utility directly to inform them. You can also contact Digger's hotline for a relocate request. That will get the locators back out to the job site so that the issue can be resolved. Proceed with caution. If you continue excavation, plan meticulously. Your goal? Prevent damage and avoid interference with other facilities. Safety and accuracy go hand in hand. Always stay alert for mismarks and respond promptly. Facility support. During excavation, ensuring facility support is essential. Responsibility. If a facility gets exposed, it's on the excavator to check for damages and ensure support when needed and check for damages before backfilling. Exposure limits. If the utility line is exposed for a distance long enough, it could begin to sag, which can cause damage, so the excavator is responsible for supporting the exposed line. As a best practice, don't expose more than six feet of a facility without supporting it as is needed. Legal insights. The law states, provide support for existing transmission facilities. Facility owners might specify additional protection measures. Best practices. Protecting exposed facilities is important. They can shift or get damaged if not properly supported. Ways to support? Sure from below, using proper supports or bracing to prevent movement. Avoid climbing on, striking, or moving exposed facilities. Remember, facility support isn't just best practice, it's ensuring safety and avoiding damage. Damage Damage during excavation can have far-reaching effects. If damage occurs or is suspected, the excavator must notify the facility owner immediately. Even minor damages can compromise a facility's integrity. This includes scratches, dents, or gouges. Damage encompasses any facility that's been struck, damaged, dislocated, or disrupted. Emergencies If harmful gases or liquids escape, here's what you should do. Stop work. Shut down all machinery. Leave the site. Moving upwind. Call 911 when safely away from the site. Call the utility to let them know about the hit. Block the area to protect public safety. Make sure to leave excavation open to help facilitate repairs. Causes of damage. Remember, damage isn't only caused by digging. Things like improper support of exposed utilities, careless backfilling and more can also cause damage. Law and best practice. CGA best practices emphasize that any damage, no matter how minor, must be reported. However, Wisconsin law mandates immediate notification to the facility owner in case of damage. Importance of reporting Reporting allows for timely inspection and repairs, reducing risks of facility failure and ensuring public safety. Closing Safety and prompt reporting are crucial. Protect facilities and ensure a safer excavation environment. Backfilling and closeout
Backfilling is the final crucial phase in an excavation project. Initial checks. Before backfilling, ensure no damage occurred during excavation. Check all exposed pipelines and facilities are well supported. Best practices for backfilling. Remove all trash, debris, coiled wire, and any material that might harm underground facilities. Also, discard large rocks, sharp objects, and big clay chunks. When to proceed. Once the site is clear of debris and facilities are secure, backfilling can commence. Soil management. Compact the topsoil to its original state to ward off erosion. In case of damage. If damage is discovered, notify the facility operator. If there's a hazardous leak, call 911 immediately. Don't backfill until any damage is repaired. Documentation. Document everything and take photos to show that underground facilities are undamaged prior to backfill. Closing. Backfilling is more than filling a hole. It's about safety, responsibility, and care. Always ensure you follow the right steps. When you are done with the excavation project, be sure to remove the locate flags. Consequences Damaging underground facilities can lead to dire outcomes. Let's dive into these consequences. Injuries, illnesses, or even death. Explosions, fires, floods. Public inconveniences and service disruptions. Rising costs, from emergency services to lawsuits. Repairing or replacing damaged facilities. Covering construction equipment damages. Environmental cleanup. Legal, medical, and third-party property damages. Spiking insurance premiums. Violations in enforcement. Wisconsin has been working to improve everyone's commitment to safety and responsibility in utility damage prevention. The goal is to ensure that everyone involved is upholding their responsibilities. Enforcing these laws and policies is vital to maintain the safety of both excavators and utilities working in the field. One critical element that plays a pivotal role in maintaining these standards emerged from 2018 legislation. It's applicable to anyone working around natural gas or hazardous materials. Here's the deal. As an excavator, if you come across any violations related to natural gas or hazardous materials at your job sites, you now have the ability to report it online via the Diggers Hotline website. But don't forget utilities also can report violations. But what happens next? Complaints won't just vanish into thin air. A panel of industry experts and stakeholders will carefully review the complaint and any responses. From there, they'll determine the best course of action. They might dismiss the complaint, or they could offer an educational course to address the issue. But if things escalate and the Public Service Commission steps in, be prepared for a thorough investigation. They'll scrutinize the incident, evaluate the circumstances, and weigh the evidence. The consequences for violations can be severe. The Public Service Commission has the authority to impose fines, and they're not messing around. You heard that right. Fines can go up to $25,000 for each offense, and it's a daily penalty. Just to give you an idea of how serious they are, there was an incident with six individual violations that resulted in a massive $150,000 fine issued by the PSC. So remember, whether you're an excavator or manage utilities, safety and responsibility are paramount. Everyone plays a role in keeping Wisconsin safe. Together, we can follow these laws and maintain a thriving and secure community. Let's work together to ensure a safer Wisconsin for all. Report violations and stand up for what's right. The cost of prevention is always less than the price of a mistake. Let's protect and preserve our facilities together. Conclusion Excavation is not just about digging deep. It's about digging safely. Importance of training With proper training, education, and understanding of rules, you're set to reduce risks dramatically. Be informed. In Wisconsin, every excavator must know the location of facilities nearby and plan accordingly. This isn't just about procedure, it's about safety. Know the law.
In Wisconsin, excavators must be well-versed with state and federal excavation laws. A good start is being familiar with Wisconsin State Statute, Chapter 182, Section 0175. Knowing the responsibilities of all stakeholders will help you understand why your role in the damage prevention process is so valuable. Steps to Safe Excavation Call Diggers Hotline three working days before you dig. Wait for locates to be completed. Respect and protect the marks. Always hand exposed facilities within the 18-inch tolerance zone. Support exposed facilities. Immediately report damages to the facility owner, operator. No blame games. Backfill cautiously. Thank you for joining us today. Safety in excavation isn't an afterthought. It's a process. Follow the steps, prioritize safety, and ensure every dig is a safe one.